It is now time for member statement. I recognize the member from Newmarket Aurora. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I am pleased to highlight an event that took place last month in my great riding of Newmarket Aurora. I was honoured to welcome the Associate Minister of Women's Social and Economic Opportunity to Mar Newmarket to visit the Women's Centre of York Region. This nonprofit is one of 10 sites that this government has invested $6.9 million over three years in the expansion of the Investing in Women's Futures program. The goal of this program is to help more women who experience social and economic barriers to connect to supports and develop the skills they need to gain financial security and independence. There are now 33 service delivery locations across this province, and to date, the program has already yielded significant results. In 2022-23, this program assisted nearly 1,300 women across Ontario in securing employment, launching their own business, or pursuing further training and education. For more than 45 years, the Women's Centre of York Region has been a beacon of empowerment for women in York Region, and I was proud to announce that they are the recipient of $325,000 of this funding to help the women in our region reach their full potential. Thank you to the York Region women. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Temiskaming Cochrane. Thank you. Speaker, uh, this government has repeatedly said that Ontario has the safest roads in North America, and that was the Liberals always said that too. But I can assure you that Highway 11, the Trans Canada Highway, the two lane from North Bay North, is not the safest road in North America, not the safest road in Ontario, and it's the Trans Canada Highway. The trucks that cross the country go through that. I'll tell you what happens on the Trans Canada Highway north of North Bay. When I was driving here on Sunday afternoon, Sunday morning, oh, highway's closed. It snowed. Highway's closed. Transport, when, I, when the highway opened again, I got there, transport on its side, it's one lane. You know what the highway north of North Bay is right now, or at least half an hour ago? Closed. Closed. Again, again, this is the Trans-Canada Highway, another major accident. And there's things we can do. Make sure there's places for trucks to park. That was announced years ago. Not done. Make sure that the people who are on those roads are actually trained to drive on those roads. Again, it's not happening. It's not happening. That is not the safest road in North America. It's not the safest road in Ontario, and everyone knows it, and it's our main street, and people are dying because of it. Come on, let's get going. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Kitchener, Conestoga. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and it was a pleasure to join the Minister of Education as well as my colleague member for Cambridge in Kitchener on Friday for an important announcement. Our government will be opening 3,725 new childcare spaces in Waterloo Region by 2026. This represents a nearly 25 per cent increase in childcare spaces, which our government will deliver on over the next three years. The Region of Waterloo has said that growing wait lists have become a concern for every centre in the area. And obviously, this is great news for families in my riding of Kitchener-Conestoga and, of course, across our region. These new spaces will be part of the Canada-wide early learning and child care system, which includes a mix of not-for-profit and for-profit centres, Mr. Speaker. And I want to applaud the Minister of Education and his hard-working team for this initiative. Keeping options open for parents and communities is a key goal of the Government of Ontario to provide families with choice and flexibility. This flexibility makes sense, especially, Mr. Speaker, in small towns, which is often where child care spaces are needed the most. That includes Wilmot, Wellesley and Woolwich Townships, which are all listed as priority areas under our plan. We remain committed to delivering more affordable and accessible childcare spaces across the province. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Windsor West. Speaker, gender-based violence in Ontario is an epidemic. While several city and town councils acknowledge this, the Conservative government won't. The longer they don't acknowledge gender-based violence, the more women will be assaulted and killed by intimate partners. Domestic violence and abuse can often be denied, minimized, or overlooked by many. 
Awareness campaigns are so important to ensure everyone can spot the signs of domestic violence. Recognizing abuse is the first step for saving women's lives. In Windsor, I'm grateful for the Shine the Light campaign that the Hiatus House organizes every year, where they shine the light on domestic violence and abuse, acknowledge and commemorate the victims, and provide the much-needed supports. Every woman and child in Windsor and across the province of Ontario deserve a life free from abuse. We must advocate on behalf of those whose voices have been silenced by abuse. This is why the Ontario NDP has continued to call on the Premier of Ontario to act and declare intimate partner violence an epidemic in Ontario. I want to take a moment to remember Sara Bouley and Janice Madison, two Windsor women whose lives were cut short by their spouses in tragic losses this year. Janice was just stabbed to death by her husband within the last two weeks. Their loss is felt by all who knew them and our entire community. My thoughts are with their families and loved ones. But, Speaker, thoughts aren't enough. We know that, tragically, gender-based violence and femicide is on the rise, and we are long overdue for urgent change in action. The government will continue to fail women and victors of gender-based violence across the province by not acknowledging the urgency of this issue. The government has to act now. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Markham, Thornhill. So, Speaker. Last week, I had the privilege of attending two Diwali events in Markham and Richmond Hill, hosted by the Ontario Telugu Foundation and the Armadale Seniors Wellness Club. Through gatherings like these, we strengthened the bond of family and friendship, fostering a sense of unity and sense of celebration. Diwali is a festival of light, symbolizing the victory of light over the darkness and knowledge over the ignorance. It's age us to cleanse our inner self, cast away the burden of ego, jealousy, and pride. As we illuminate our dias, we let the radiance not only brighten our homes, but also illuminate our hearts and minds, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, in this unprecedented and challenging time, Dibabal is safe as a guiding light, reminding us of importance of friendship compassion, and understanding and overcoming adversities. As we navigate these uncertain times, may the spirit of Diwali inspire us to spread love, light, and positive, positivity in our communities and to the world as well. Thank you to the Ontario Telugu Foundation and the Armadale Seniors Wellness Club for organizing this meaningful, wonderful celebration. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for London Fanshawe. Thank you, Speaker. We all know our health care system hinges on a well-staffed, well-earning, well-supported nursing workforce, but the, but the nurses I speak to are at, their, at the end of their rope. Despite feeling a true calling to the vocation of nursing and dedicating their lives and careers to helping others, these nurses are leaving the sector in droves because they feel over overworked, underpaid, and underappreciated. They face violence in the workplace, long hours, irregular shifts, and constant, short, constant shortages. This is untenable and downright dangerous. One nurse said to me, quote, if I could go back and choose a different career, I would. Our managers try to support us the best way they can, but the issues in the system are so widespread that it is impossible to make meaningful change in working conditions. And at the end of the day, I can quit my job and move on, but patients are stuck in a broken system and will continue to suffer, end quote. Unfortunately, there are many ways in which the system is broken, but there are also many ways which we can fix it. Stop fighting health care workers in the court system and repeal Bill 124. Another solution would be to address um, the agency bill that my colleagues have brought forward in order to make sure that the agencies are not paying their wa wages higher than replacement workers that are on this floor, and make sure nurses get the respect they deserve mm -hmm. and make health care work for patients and not for profits. Thank you, Speaker. Member Statements. The member for Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. There is news today that some of the hostages held by Hamas for 46 days uh, may be released in an exchange. And I pray that those uh, who will be released, I pray some will be released, but I hope that those will 
be, who will be released include b the babies and children who have been he being held up until this point in time, and especially the niece, Ofer, 10 years old, and nephews, Yuval, 8 and 4, uh, Uriah, uh, who, who are the niece and nephews of a constituent in my riding. Last week, students at a Jewish elementary school in Toronto were evacuated due to a bomb threat, and regular customers of a Starbucks location in my riding found the store windows covered with anti-Semitic graffiti. This is not normal, and it cannot become normal. Each of us has a responsibility to condemn anti-Semitism and all the acts of hate within our province. The Toronto Police Service has been an invaluable partner in responding to these incidents and others, and my office continues to receive messages expressing thanks for their protection and the government's introduction of mandatory Holocaust education in the Ontario curriculum, as well as our recognition of Israel's right to defend itself and the right of Jewish Ontarians to live without fear in this province. Since the terrible events of October 7, my office has received countless emails from constituents concerning a common theme. I am deeply concerned for the safety of my family and our community. I reiterate that these events are not normal, they cannot become normal, to live in a province where these displays of intolerance occur unopposed and become commonplace is unthinkable. Today, tomorrow and always, we must condemn anti-Semitism whenever and wherever it happens. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Don Valley North. Thank you, Speaker. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Metro Rings for their great work in a series of consultations, allowing local residents to share their input on their separate extension project that will have a lasting impact on the future of transit in our city. Speaker, when I spoke with my constituents at their doors in Dunwoody North during my 2018 and 2022 campaigns. Public transit tends to be a topic of great interest. We have many meaningful discussions on the subway options as well as LRT and current commute challenges that both transit riders and drivers are facing. They express overwhelming support and eagerness for their simple subway line extension. Speaker, for those who have missed last week's in-person consultations, they can visit my website, winsinkermpp.com, for information on the first round of the MetroLink public consultations that remain open to comment through December 7. Speaker, I encourage the residents of Dunwoody North and anyone interested to participate in this important consultation. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Burlington. Good morning, Speaker, and thank you. Recently, I attended the Hamilton Burlington Chapter of Professional Engineers Ontario Fall Certificate Ceremony. This ceremony marked the licensure of approximately 20 individuals who will embark on their professional engineering career career right here in Ontario. Engineering is built into everything we do, from the vehicles we drive to the technology in our pockets. Engineering is the backbone of modern society. Last year, high school courses in science, technology, engineering, and math were updated to ensure students have the cutting edge digital literacy and technological skills to lead the global innovations of today and tomorrow. Every year, more than 65,000 students graduate from STEM programs. By modernizing the STEM and skilled programs, our province is able to grow businesses that continue to innovate and thrive. In May of this year, Professional Engineers Ontario became the first regulated profession to remove Canadian work experience from their registration criteria, allowing more skilled workers to enter their trades without the requirement for Canadian work experience. I'd like to congratulate PEO for taking this historic step and leading the way as Ontario welcomes thousands of new skilled workers every year. Thank you to Professional Engineers Ontario for ensuring the advancement of engineers in our province. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Stormont, Dundas, South Glengarry. Thank you, Speaker. 
Today, I'd like to acknowledge the hard work in the community of Dundas County and the Winchester District Memorial Hospital Foundation as they help raise funds for the building of the new Dundas Manor. The committee has been raising funds for years for the building of a new state-of-the-art facility to help support and better serve patients and residents within our community. Part of the fundraising efforts to build the new Dundas Manor is their campaign called Expanding the Circle of Compassionate Care, which holds events to reach this end. One such event was the Manor's 45th anniversary, held on Saturday, November 18th, or as it was appropriately named, the Sapphires and Snowflakes Evening. The special evening was held at Matilda Hall in Dixon's Corners. Tickets were sold for $78 as the Dundas Manor originally opened in 1978. We had a great fun evening filled with delicious cocktails and charcuterie. The event included a live auction and excellent entertainment by comedy musical duo, duo Bowser and Blue, all in the efforts of supporting a new Dundas Manor. Speaker, I'm proud to say the event raised $155,000. Oh. Our government is also committed to this project as we have given Dundas Manor approval to construct. This means the new Dundas Manor can build the 128-bed home they have been raising funds for, allowing seniors to stay in the community they helped build. Thank you to the organizers and all the staff at Dundas Manor for their work, not only in organizing the event, but for the wonderful care they provide our seniors. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning.